Grand Theft Auto 4 is known for its shitty ports. Despite almost being a PlayStation exclusive, the PS3 version is ugly as shit and it runs like shit. And the Xbox version really ain't much better. Unfortunately, Rockstar is kind of notorious for treating their older games like dog shit. And this means bugs that have been known for literal years are still present in most versions. And thus on probably the best port, the Xbox Series X version, there's still a really annoying bug here, on the final mission. Which could frustrate players that are completing the game. But this bug was fixed way back in 2018 on PC. So I don't really know why it wasn't on the Xbox Series X copy. And that PC port, well, it uh, it ran and looked the absolute worst. For some reason, it has a lot of cool exclusive content, like new trees, a lack of reflections, the depth of field was fucked, just like the volumetric lighting. I mean, really, a lot of visual content was stripped with this port, as well as the performance side of things. The saddest part is when you realize that the original atmosphere the game had was completely fucked up with this port. Shortly after that PC 2018 update, an ultra fuck ton of music was removed and or replaced, including an entire fucking radio station, one of the most iconic ones for the game in fact, and one of the tracks wasn't even released until 2016? When does this game take place again? Also on the PC port, basically every weapon is broken as fuck and has nearly no spread whatsoever. Not to mention the animations for the assault rifles were given a delay for some reason. And some other questionable balancing changes were made, like the Annihilator. Now all of this does sound small, but all of this added on top of each other, it really makes the gameplay clunky and repetitive, especially in PvP. It's far too quick for the game's intended pace. I've honestly worked on entire videos just discussing how in-depth the gameplay does go. All these little things really do add up. Hi, Mr. Wob. Hi. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking clown. But hey, at least they added some gnarly clothes for the multiplayer, right? Well, in 2020, they would remove multiplayer. One of the most revolutionary and impressive online modes I've seen was removed. The foundation of their later online iterations resides here, whether it's for Red Dead, Max Payne 3, or fucking GTA 5 Online. And they spat in its face with this. However, it's quite clear they were working on GTA 4 Online to make them compatible with the newest social club, which I have talked about in a previous video. In short, with the debug menu you can play LAN multiplayer with the latest patch and it will utilize your social club name. There's apparently numerous references seen in programs like Cheat Engine. They even revamped all achievement icons, including multiplayer ones. Perhaps it will be released later down the line, maybe in the form of a remaster, or just another shitty update. Alongside that, they also made the game rely on the most garbage and useless game launcher to ever exist, the Rockstar Games Launcher. Now why this thing exists, I really don't know. This shitty ass launcher is buggy as fuck, it relies on an internet connection, and adds yet another overlay onto the game that literally does nothing. You open it, and it gives you essentially a PNG file to gaze upon. Now why am I bitching so much about all this? It's because this video is going to show you how to fix every single thing I've mentioned thus far, and then some. Of course, this guide only applies to the PC version. Real quick, I'll mention now that the state of multiplayer is really weird. There's various kinds you can use, the original Games for Windows Live version, or the fan created multiplayer mods. And thus, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it in this video. It will become outdated very quickly. And so I lied. I won't be going over everything I mentioned. But if anything changes, however, I will make an additional video. Until then, I'll link external methods below. I will also link an alternative to this video. If you prefer text guides instead, I'll link the most in-depth modding guide that exists for this game. It will cover more than my video, but that's because I'm filtering stuff that I don't think needs to be covered, especially if you're just trying to play the game in its proper form. So let's get started. The Downgrader. It's the magnum opus to improving this damn game. It's a program that handholds you through the entire process of fixing it. It'll essentially revert the newest update to one of three of the older ones. Afterwards, it'll bring back the original music for the game, and then it'll give you a list of some absolutely essential mods to have for the game. All of them will improve stability, performance, and even some extra quality of life changes are available here. So how do you get it? I'll link it below in the description alongside a program called 7-Zip, which is a free archiving tool that I highly recommend even outside of modding. You'll open it with that program, and then drag and drop everything into an isolated folder. Run the .exe file as administrator, and then it'll help you through the rest of the process. Now, I will make some quick notes. During the mod section, I would highly recommend all of them except script hook, unless you plan on modding further. 
but that's another topic for a different video. You can also uncheck Zilliqa's Trainer, unless you plan on utilizing its features. When the downgrader is complete, you'll find most of these mods in the main directory. You can further configure these mods by opening files labeled with .ini. But if you can't find them, make sure your file name extensions is enabled in the file explorer. Now, right before you actually do downgrade, I highly, highly recommend checking the backups box here, or if you need the original files for whatever reason. Once you've completed the downgrader steps, head to your game's location and ensure it actually works. But if it doesn't, chances are it's related to a restriction for the game's location, whether it's your antivirus or you're not an admin in your computer. But generally, if it was your antivirus, the file most commonly flagged is Zilliqa Patch. So if you do run into issues, ensure that ZilliqaPatch.asi is in your game's location. If it's not, create an exclusion for that mod in your antivirus, then grab it again within the downgrader files or the official mod page. Now, as I said at the beginning, the performance on this game ain't great, but I will make one important point that applies to everyone, your in-game settings. If you're on 1070 or 1080, very high shadows is pretty broken and can nearly have your performance, so I recommend high or lower. Use a view or detail distance lower than 60 or so. Not only is this feature extremely taxing on the game's performance, it can cause light flickering at the highest numbers. Now before you leave this video, I would recommend doing a couple more things. When you first launch the game, open a volume mixer and turn this bitch ass game down because for some reason the loading screen doesn't really match your audio settings and so it's originally loud as fuck. And finally, if you plan on modding a lot, open task manager, head to the settings and enable always on top. I would also change the default tab to details as sometimes when a process is really frozen it won't show up on the process tab. Now, the reason why I'm recommending this is because if your game ever freezes, you can press Control shift escape to open the task manager followed with the arrow keys and then press delete to close it. And that's it, your game is properly set up. If you're gonna continue modding, this is your absolute foundation, excluding external modding tools. Otherwise, enjoy your proper GTA 4 copy. You are able to run from Steam and everything should work as expected. Anyway, uh, bye.